this isn't going to be your typical car review for a couple of reasons. The first is that the wait list for the Toyota Land Cruiser 70 Series V8 is about 47 years long and the order books are unlikely to ever reopen. The second is that if you're interested in one of these, chances are nothing I'm going to say is going to change your mind either way. My dad was the perfect example. He bought himself a 70 Series wagon just like this one as a retirement present, didn't consider anything else, just wanted one. Despite this, I've never driven a 70 Series, not even once. So today, I'm gonna to try and discover what all the fuss is about. Before we get into it, like the video, subscribe to the Car Sales channel, and give us a comment. The 70 Series Toyota Land Cruiser is such an icon in Australia, it's a wonder it isn't on the flag. For decades, its reputation for hardiness and reliability has made it integral to the country's construction, mining and farming operations. And for 2024, it's had a facelift. Literally, with this retro-style front end, which I think looks pretty cool, though, is maybe a bit of an acquired taste. This is as family-friendly as a 70 Series gets. It's a five-seat wagon in up-spec GXL, guys. The wagon is the cheapest configuration, but you'll still need around $95,000 on road. But it's also not quite that simple. You see, the order books might be closed, but you could buy one of these tomorrow. As I film this, there are around 10 of this exact spec on car sales with next to no kilometers, but you'll pay around a $15,000 to $20,000 premium to skip the queue. The GXL has 16 inch alloy wheels rather than steel, LED front fog lamps, chrome bumpers and exterior trim, and the black guard flares, as well as the snorkel and alloy side steps featured across the range. The big news with the updated 70 series was the arrival of the four cylinder engine and six speed auto from the Hilux, but this is the OG. 4.5 litre turbo diesel V8 and five speed manual. This engine redefines unstressed. In fact, it only makes around the same power and significantly less torque than the four cylinder. It's not especially frugal either, but the 130 litre tank at least means you won't be filling up very often and gives an easy 1,000 kilometres of range. Toyota's traditional five-year warranty with seven years coverage on the driveline applies, though servicing costs a fortune, more than $5,000 across the first 10 visits. And this patrol, for instance, is almost half that. Hop inside and the GXL has all the creature comforts you'd expect for almost $100,000, like electric windows, a four speaker stereo instead of two, cloth trim for seats and doors, and a carpeted floor. Look, jokes aside, I get the simplicity, and in a way it's really refreshing, but what I don't get is, simple doesn't have to mean sparse. For example, in a car like this, why not have lots of clever and convenient storage solutions? Instead you've just got this tiny center console and a single cup holder that looks like an afterthought. I guess you can always just chuck stuff on the floor. Surely this is a car that you conceivably spend a long time in, whether hours or distance. So you'd want places to put stuff. Anyway. The infotainment is basic. There's smartphone mirroring, Bluetooth and AM FM, but no digital radio. And it seems Toyota has removed SatNav, which seems strange for a vehicle that will probably spend a lot of its life beyond phone reception. Updated dials are analog and easy to read, but there's now a small digital readout on the right hand side with various info, but possibly the most useful feature is the digital speed readout, just to make sure you're A-OK -okay if you're approaching a camera. A 2022 update brought some basic active safety kit to the 70 series, like autonomous emergency braking and lane keep assist, and there are a few airbags for the front passengers. There is also a reversing camera in the wagon, but it's offset nature does take a little getting used to as it doesn't centre you in the spot. Combine that with the mammoth turning circle and it can look like a bit of a learner. Space is okay in the back, though you're not going to want to be too tall and the seat itself is comfy enough. But as you might have guessed, there's nothing but a matte pocket back here, so you're going to have to make your own entertainment. Thankfully, the windows are nice and big for playing I Spy and the flat floor means three across should be okay as long as you don't mind getting cosy. The other omission is Isofix, so it's the seat belt method if you need to put a baby seat in, though there are a trio of top tethers above the rear doors. The boot is a very handy size with four tie-down points, 
But the big appeal of a car like this is the opportunity for customization. Drawers and cupboards and fridges and all sorts of stuff can easily be added via the aftermarket. Max towing capacity is 3.5 tonnes and payload is over 1,100 kilos, which is very impressive. But it also brings me to a bit of a rant. But for that, let's get behind the wheel. The one thing I really struggle with with the 70 series is the cynicism. Now let me explain what I mean by that. In general, you'd hope that a manufacturer would make a car as good as it possibly could. Toyota just does the bare minimum with this thing while still charging mega bucks for it. Let me give you a couple of examples. So when the 70 series switched to V8 power back in 2007, the front track had to be widened to accommodate the bigger engine. So did Toyota bother doing the rear as well? No. Subsequently, the rear track is around 100 millimetres narrower than the front. Likewise, in 2022, the 70 series actually came under threat from new side impact regulations, which spelled the end of the Alpine A110, Lexus RC, and Nissan GTR in Australia, among others. It's actually a very sad day. But instead of upgrading the safety in the 70, Toyota just recertified the GVM, the gross vehicle mass, to 3,510 kilograms, 10 kilos more than the threshold to become a light truck, which circumvented the need for the extra safety equipment. And not just that, only the two-seat utes get side airbags because that's the volume seller to fleets. Everyone else? Tough luck. But there's another side to this. If you surveyed all the 70 series owners and gave them the choice of the extra safety kit, which would likely drive the price up, or the extra payload, almost 500 kilograms more in the case of the wagon, then I'd be willing to bet they'd choose the payload 99 times out of 100. And it's smart business on Toyota's part. This thing must be like 60% profit margin. Anyway, I digress. What's the 70 series like to drive? Not as bad as I thought it would be. Don't get me wrong. It's a complete blast from the past and hopelessly outclassed by any modern standards. The wind noise is ridiculous. It's incredibly slow. The turning circle is crazy. The ride isn't that much worse than some dual cabs, but everything in this car requires lots of effort, in particular the steering and the gear shift. And yet, that's also part of the charm. I enjoy driving this thing, I enjoy finding ways to work with it. For example, you quickly learn that selecting every gear is a waste of time. I either go 1, 3, 5 or 2 and 4. And to be honest, if you're feeling super lazy, you can just leave it in third all the time. And these things do sound mega with a new exhaust on them. I talked earlier about Toyota's cynical approach to this car, but what it does do is plenty of development testing to ensure that you can do thousands and thousands and thousands of kilometres on rough and corrugated roads like this without worrying about anything breaking or falling off. And of course, a huge part of the appeal of this car and Toyota's in general is that if something does go wrong, chances are you'll find the parts and someone to fix it no matter where you are in the country or, for that matter, the world. It's also pretty handy in the rough stuff in standard guise, though while I'm certainly no expert, there are a few shortcomings. As mentioned earlier, the front and rear tracks are different, so they don't always fall in the same ruts. Likewise, the articulation isn't great, the rear spring hangers can get caught up in the mud because they sit very low, and the rear overhang is pretty large too. But that's all fairly hardcore off-road stuff with super low range gearing and locking diffs at both ends 70 series will still go further off the beaten track than most other standard cars and no worrying about ugh, electronic dials or gadgetry here you just pull big levers the Toyota Land Cruiser 70 series is a complete anachronism it's extraordinarily expensive to buy and run, and isn't safe, comfortable, or well equipped. And yet, punters can't get enough. So, can I see what all the fuss is about? Mm, sort of. 
There's definite appeal in the 70 series ruggedness and simplicity. And while I can whinge about the cost all I like, any product is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. And clearly tens of thousands of people think this is fantastic value. I'm not one of them, but I'm glad to have tried it. If you love your 70 series, let me know why in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, hit like, hit subscribe, and let us know any cars you want us to review in the comments below.